Hello guys, my name is Diego Pacheco and this is another Java video. Today we're gonna talk about Bitwise and how we can do Bitwise in Java. Bitwise is used in several use cases. It could be for graphics um, when uh, you don't have enough space to get um, into every area. So, shore is used uh, because applied input uh, in a second time will undo the first one. So, other GUIs use uh, to rely on this selection, highlighting other overlays in order to eliminate the need of constantly heat draw. In that case, saving performance, uh, mostly used for remote desktops or other slow graphics. Is used on finite state machines, and there's a bunch of algorithms that use uh, finite state machines, like a bunch of logical gates, and express it as and or not sure. It's heavily used in compression, encryption, security. Uh, they heavily depend on bitwise algorithms like deflate. Um, everything is in bits, not bytes. Uh, communication over ports and sockets uh, always involve like checksums, parity, uh, stop bits, flow control algorithms, and they usually depend on, on logic of values of individual bytes opposed to numerical values. Since the medium may only be capable of transmitting one bit at a time. And also for bit flags, uh, which is an uh, or or bit fields, which is an interesting structure, uh, is an efficient way of representing something or some state by several yes or no properties on or off. Uh, ACLs is a good example. And uh, if you have let's say four discrete permissions, read, write, execute, change policy, is better to store this as one byte rather than uh, waste four. Those can be mapped into enumeration types in a language like, you know, added convenience. So there's a bunch of use cases for uh, bitwise. And um, having said that and having uh, and, and giving this uh, uh, background uh, to you guys, now I want to share a PLC I did in Java and I can show how we can do some bitwise in Java. So let's go to that. Let me open my idea here. Let's open it. And I have a Maven project here in idea. So if you look my pawn.xml, as usual, I don't have any dependencies. There is JUnit for testing here, but I'm not using it really. So there's no uh, dependencies in standard Java. Um, and I'm, I'm doing here a bunch of bitwise operations. I also have some Java doc explaining what's going on under the hood. So uh, we're going to do six uh, bitwise operations. There's one that's not supported by Java. We're going to do R and XOR. Uh, complement, we're going to do signed right shift, unsigned right shift, um, and we can do left shift, but we cannot do uh, unsigned left shift, right? So that's uh, the ones we are uh, doing the six. Um, so let's start with or, right? So here you can see I have these two integers, right? And I can do something like this. All right, so this is a bitwise or going on under the hood. So bitwise or operator is this uh, single pipe here, all right, and it returns bit by bit or of the input values. Like if one of the bits is one, it gives one, otherwise it gives zero. For example, five in binary is zero, one, zero, one, and seven in binary is zero, one, uh, zero one, all right? And let me get this much better, right? So here we see zero or zero is zero. Here we have one or one is one. 
0 or 1 is 1, and 1 and 1 is 1. And we've converted this back to decimal is 7. And here are the computation and the result. And that's what's going on under the hood. That's how we do a bitwise or pretty simple, right? Uh, you can get any uh, value in binary representation. If, if you do, uh, there is the integer, integer um, wrapper type in Java. There is this method called to binary string. Uh, and, and you can pass an int uh, and then you can get that. Uh, like if I do this, I can get seven in binary. All right. So I can have here that in binary and I can print it so we can see this later on. Okay. Uh, now let's move on. We're going to see and so and again, I have a and b five and seven you do by this amp and that's pretty much what you do. So bitwise and uh, this is a binary and and it works like this. If both bits are one, it gives one, otherwise zero. So now everything needs to be one to be one. So if you get five in binary zero one zero one seven zero one one, we're gonna have like this. So zero and zero is zero. One and one is one. Zero and one is zero. One and one is one. And this gives uh, five in decimal, right? And that's the code. The next one, uh, we're going to do a XOR. So XOR, um, is corresponding bits are different. So it gives one, uh, else it gives a zero. So five in binary is zero, one, one, seven, zero, one, one, one. So if we do this zero and zero is zero. 1 and 1 is 0. Why? Because it's the opposite, right? And 0 and 1 is 1, and 1 and 1 is 0. And if we got this in decimal, it's 2. And to do XOR, we do this character here, and that's how we do XOR in Java. So that's XOR. The next one is bitwise complement. So let me go here. So this work basically uh, in one... Uh, number only, you don't have two parameters, is a complement representation of the input. So all the bits are inverted, which means uh, all zeros make one and all one makes zero. For example, five in, in binary is zero, one, zero, one. So if bitwise this, the opposite of zero is one, the opposite of one is zero, the opposite of zero, zero, one, the opposite of one is zero. And this in decimal is 10. Note that compiler will give you the second complement, right? And in this case, the second complement of 10 will be minus 6. Okay? To do that in Java, we use this tilde. You just put a tilde in front of the number, and that's how you do complement. The next one we're going to do is bitwise signed right shift. So right shift, it means that we're going to shift bytes to the number to the right, and we're going to fill the voids uh, on the left. So uh, the sign bit one in the case of negative and zero in the case of positive. The leftmost bit depends on the sign of the initial number. So similar effect of dividing the number of the power of two. So example, um, Let's say A is minus 10 and A shifted, right shifted to 1, it's going to give you minus 5. So uh, in Java, we do that with these two characters here. That's how we do signed right shift. The next one here, all right, we can do unsigned right shift. And it is a right shift. So again, um, right fills with zero, voids left as result. The leftmost bit is zero, right? And it's unsigned shift. So we will insert zero, is signed, and we will extend the bit. So if A is minus 10, uh, A uh, to 1 is going to be this, all right? Um, 
and uh, if we do ja in Java with these three operators here together. Uh, it's possible to do left shift in um, in Java, right? Um, I actually I'm not calling my function in here. Let me add it here. So we can do left shift. So we look here, um, A is five, B is one. And we do, it's exactly like uh, signed right shift, but it's to the other direction, right? And uh, here what happens is, um, it shifts the number of the bits to the left and fills zero on void left as a result. So similar effect as multiplying the number with the power of two. For example, let's say five in binary is this, minus 10 in binary is this. So uh, left shift from A to one is this, which is 10, and A to two is this, which is 20, right? And this is how we do it. Now you must be thinking, okay, how we do um, unsigned left shift in Java? Well, we don't, because in Java, we cannot do that. Java doesn't have uh, support, right? Um, because the logical uh, the, uh, left uh, shift, arithmetic left shift are uh, identical. And Java doesn't have support for that. We can do that. Um, that's what I got. Let me run this. You guys can see they all in action. And we have sort of binary representation of seven. So here are is representation of uh, seven, right? So uh, that's it. I hope you guys like it. See you next time. Take care. Cheers.